it's Jennifer. It's Thursday, April 6th, and today I'm out checking out the progress on my tomatoes. Um, one of the things that caught my eye yesterday is that these Lozano tomatoes are getting a bit out of control. So, the Lozano tomatoes are a determinant type, and they're not supposed to get tall, but what I've noticed, instead of getting tall, they're getting very wide, which is no good in my um, raised beds. So even though they're fairly mature, I'm thinking about moving them into um, individual pots such that they aren't touching all of the other tomatoes in the raised bed. As you can see, this limb is all the way out here. This limb out here and then in here you can see that there are some blight and I just don't want this plant spreading its germs so to speak all over. So this one is also a Lozano and it also has blight issues and so I would like to just get these out of the planter and move them into their own separate pots so they can spread out and not harm any of the other plants. So it's the next day, and today I finally get a chance to move some of these Lozano tomatoes around into individual pots. So this is the first pot that you're going to plant the biggest tomato in. I made some dirt today, and so I only filled this pot a little bit, made a nice, uh, I guess, divot, in the, not divot, but a nice, um, I guess, <laughs> parabolic shape. Uh, to accept the roots and then we'll see and then I'll just go ahead and put dirt over that but I don't know how big the root ball is going to be but I'm going to take a guess and this is the dirt I mixed today which is um, a mixture of one cubic foot of steer manure compost a bag of coffee grounds from Starbucks um, about a cubic foot of uh, peat moss, a uh, good helping of perlite, I don't know, I just kind of pour it in until it looks like it's too much, and a handful of um, fertilizer granules. And this is the big plant that I'm going to try to move today. Um, <laughs> hopefully I don't kill it, <laughs> we'll see. And then also there's this plant and then two other smaller uh, Lizetto plants that I want to get out of the raised beds and into containers. not so bad. Much smaller than I expected. Alright, we'll hold it upside down. And take this over to the pot. Okay, and now to put this in the pot. Alright. 
So this is the second big plant. This one's not in the best shape. So I think I should go ahead and prune off some of the um, diseased and dead branches. Yep. Which I hate doing this because this is a determinant plant, which means that it um, will only grow to be so big, put out all of its fruit at, a, at the same time, and then die. I noticed last year when I planted determinant tomatoes that the more they get towards maturity, the easier, they seem more susceptible to disease as they get older, I should say. So, I don't know, this just could be the natural aging of this plant or whatever, but I don't need this type of disease anywhere near my other tomato plants. So. We'll see how this one goes. This one might be a lost cause, I don't know. But now it's looking pretty straggly. <laughs> and when you trim off leaves like this, don't put them in your compost pile. Uh, put them in your municipal compost pile. They have uh, composters and whatnot that can deliver the heat to kill spores and insects and whatnot. I don't trust my own composter to heat up enough to uh, kill all the bad stuff in here. Well, the other thing to remember also is when you move plants, especially when they're this old, uh, tomatoes especially can look pretty beat down uh, for the first few days. My experience has been to give them a week or two. If after a couple of weeks they don't recover, then it's probably dead. You should go ahead and give up on that plant, compost it, and replant it or plant something else. So we'll see how these two do. The two younger plants should uh, not experience any trauma. So I think I have one more of those to move and I'm done for the day with these, with these Lozano tomatoes. And here are the smaller plants that I moved. I've been growing these as a pair and Given how stringy the adult plants appear to be, perhaps this is a good thing. Um, hopefully they'll rely upon each other for support. And here's the other pair. Again, I let these stay as a pair because the two plants that sprouted were healthy and I just felt bad killing a healthy plant. So I let it be. In the past I've done this. I uh, haven't detected a problem. Usually by the time the plant's big, I can't even tell it was a pear. So for example, I left this black crim as a pair of plants. In the past, I've seen that black crim uh, grows up as stringy. So, um, but I've been growing them in containers. So I'm hoping it's a different story now that I've planted them in dirt. This raised bed actually goes down to the dirt. It's not blocked off by a gopher fence fencing on the bottom. Um, so we'll see how this goes, but so far it just looks like one plant to me.